from Psalm 121. I lift up mine eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we enter this service, this service that is the last when we will be together as congregation and pastor, we are mindful that this church and I are at the beginning of new beginnings, unsure about where the journeys will take us. But we pray that we may always remember that you are there with us, awake, watching over us. And may we feel that as we continue through this service of worship, as we gaze upon you and your word and your son, that we might feel strengthened, renewed, and made whole. In your son's name we pray. Amen. scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. 
Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling. She fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Thanks be to God for the word given us in scripture. Amen. Today is my last sermon as the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Sterling. So I will be preaching predominantly to the members of the First Presbyterian Church of Sterling. But I also believe that what I say is applicable to the people and members and the pastor of the Myersville Presbyterian Church. So I hope it will speak to you as well. And to those who are not a member of either church, I pray that you will find meaning for your life in this sermon. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are the one who strengthens us and who redeems us. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. A man went to a church meeting where they had a guest speaker who had the gift of healing. And when he went, when he went into work on Monday, his colleague said, so how was it? And he replied, it was absolute rubbish. Even the guy in the wheelchair got up and walked out. You know, we all have things that we need to be healed of. Aches and pains, diseases, leukemia. Scenes like we saw two weeks ago in our nation's capital. The threat and fears of the pandemic. We want to be healed as well from the stresses of just our daily lives. And today I want to talk about that wish to be healed this, uh, healed in this my last sermon. In 2004, as a part of my Doctorate of Ministry project, I led a group of members of this church in a process of developing their faith narrative or their faith story. In the end, each person was encouraged or asked if they wanted to share their faith story with the rest of the group. And it was one of the most powerful moments in the lives of those who were a part of the group as they listened to each other's story. I also had participated in the process and found the process to be very meaningful. And in the development of my story, I realized that the scripture passage that Barbara read for us held much meaning for me and my ministry. We heard the woman's thoughts when she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. I've always seen the church as a place of wholeness and safety. When I was growing up, it was a place where I felt accepted. No matter what trouble I'd gotten into in the previous week, I was healed of the pain of the bullying of kids at school, or the anger of my dad because of poor grades. 
I saw the church as a place where I could make a difference and help others. The church was my balm in Gilead in the midst of a difficult childhood. And I believe that is why early on one morning when I was delivering my newspapers on bike, that I had the sudden inspiration to become a minister. I wanted to create a place of healing and wholeness for others as I had found in the church. I saw it as holy work. I came to Sterling 30 years ago hoping to create that kind of place here. A place where people could come and feel safe and feel whole. I hope I have done that. Not only for Sterling but also for Myersville as well in a small way. Yes, we've had our disagreements. We've been angry at times. I pushed you. You pushed me when we did not want to be pushed. However, through it all, we persevered. We created a space for people to feel accepted even if their ideology or politics was different. We have been and we are communities that respect the relationship more than the ideology. And that's what the gospel is all about. Notice that Jesus never questions the belief of the woman to see if she was worthy or if she has the right, right beliefs. But as we hear Jesus say, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Her faith in Jesus as a person who could help her was enough. She was healed. And we come to church, we participate in church activities such as worship and education and missions such as helping at the food bank or taking food, turkeys and hams to the Market Street Mission. Or back when I first came we took cakes to the Morris View Nursing Home. And we do all of this and did all of this not be, to feel good about ourselves, but more importantly, to touch the hem of Jesus. And doing these things, we are touched by the power of Christ in word and deed. It enables us to find Christ in our midst, in the face of those around us. We do it in our churches in Sterling and in Myersville and are empowered because of that to do it in the world as well. It could not happen if our churches were not first and foremost places of healing and respect which both of our churches have been in the 30 years that I've been pastor in Long Hill Township and in my wife's and my first church where we served for nine years in Corfu, New York, in western New York. I thank all of you for your love and your respect, not just for me but for each other. It helps me believe that my ministry has created what I hope to be a part of when I first was inspired on that early morning to enter the ministry. This has allowed us to persevere and we have endured. We have endured difficult times throughout the history of our church. We've endured our boiler cracking and catching on fire, our roofs leaking, 
loss of members. We've endured a pandemic. We've endured lack of money for our budget. We have endured because we have first and foremost been a church family. And we have tried to live out the gospel as best as we could. Always trying to stay close to Christ so that we could touch the hem of Christ, the one who heals us. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, my prayer for both churches is that as you continue your journey into the future, that your church, our church, will continue to be places of healing and wholeness. Where the stranger can come in and sit down with a sigh and say, Thank God I found this place. Now I can be at peace. And so, may the light of the gospel of Christ shine through each of you as you follow the star of God's love wherever it leads you. May the God of hope and promise and blessing bless each one of you and the Sterling and Myersville Church now and forever. Amen. comes from the Confession of 1967, one that I have used a number of times in my ministry here. I would invite you to follow me in unison as the words are printed on your screen. In Jesus Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Jesus Christ is God with humankind. He is the eternal Son of the Father, who became human and lived among us to fulfill the work of reconciliation. He is present in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit to continue and complete his mission. This work of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the foundation of all confessional statements about God, humanity, and the world. Therefore, the Church calls all people to be reconciled to God and to one another. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. O Holy One, you have called for justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Today we remember the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and we pray that you help us to embody the justice and righteousness that he sought for our country. 
help us to serve his dream of a beloved community and of a day when justice is a reality for all Americans. Inspire us by his example and by the power of your spirit at work within us to live in solidarity with all. During these tumultuous days of political and social turmoil, give us courage to pursue both accountability and peace. Grant all of our elected leaders wisdom and patience and courage to work together for the common good and to restore a spirit of partnership among us. We give you thanks, O God, for the ministry of Tom Peters, for his compassion, his determination, his sense of justice, his integrity, his joy in ministry, and most of all, for his love, his love for you, O God, for his church family, and for his community. We pray that his retirement be long and filled with good health, satisfying activity, time with his family, and most of all, joy. We pray for those of our church community who are ill, who are suffering loss of whatever kind, for those who are lonely. We name them in our hearts. O oh God, our help in times of trouble, we continue to pray for the global community as it grapples with the pandemic. We pray that you give give each of us determination to take personal responsibility for measures that protect not only ourselves, but all of us. We pray especially for the well-being of those hit hardest by this scourge. We pray for those in leadership in our communities and states and nation as they negotiate ways in which to help the most afflicted. We pray all, thing, all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, you have touched our lives in many wonderful and powerful ways. You've given us all that we have, all that we are, our very lives, our gifts, our time, our energy. And we dedicate this offering, which is a portion of your, what you have given to us. And pray that it might you be used to bring wholeness and healing in the lives of your people. Not just within our congregation, but in our community and in the world around us. May it touch your people with hope and joy. In your son's name we pray. Amen. sisters, as we leave this time, as we leave this sanctuary, let us go forth into the world. Let us be agents of healing and wholeness, touching the lives of people around us, and in doing so, touching the hem of Christ. And may the love of God, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon each of us today, tomorrow, and forever. Alleluia. Amen.